Oh yeah, go live. Check, 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 check. Dun, dun, dun. I'm just going to hang on here because it usually takes like, I don't know, 20 minutes or not 20 minutes, 20 seconds for me to figure out if people are hearing audio. And cool. Hey, Michael and Kristen are here. Hi. Is um, Oliver also watching from down there? One of the smarter poodles that I've met. Donnie and David. Awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Um, and are you, can somebody just, just let me know, are you hearing the sounds of piano and voice at the same time? Because that would be so great if we had um, sound Last time we had some sound, but like not all the sound. So I'm just being extra cautious. Brought to you by Throat Coat Tea. Hmm. The curries. Hey, Babs. I'll warn you that I kind of uh, lose track of the comments uh, really quickly. Um just because I, I really can only do like two things at the same time so um hey bloomington illinois dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah it's so crazy i'm such a punctual person um that when i say the live stream starts at seven it was like six fifty nine, and i had my finger on the mouse and was like click <clears throat> but i think i probably should leave like a couple of minutes for People who are still working stuff out. Sound is great. That's a good compliment coming from Barbara Curry, who's an amazing sound person. Um, yeah, so we're here uh, celebrating the release of The Poet Tree, uh, which is this album that I started working on uh, last January. And I kind of had writer's block and just wasn't getting anywhere. And then I watched this... Wes Anderson movie and there was this really beautiful Benjamin Britten song in there which was a setting of a children's poem and so originally I made a recording of that song um, which was called Cuckoo and then I just thought oh maybe I should think about like trying some other um, poems just as sort of like a writing exercise or something and that just kind of turned into this crazy um, thing it was just every day it was like another one another one and <clears throat> so anyway this is this is kind of the collection of stuff that was piano it's, it's it's almost like chamber music I hope that people don't like tune out when I say that um, I'm gonna have to turn my reverb turn my reverb on check 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 Yeah, so this, uh, oh, by the way, did people figure out, I made this little post in the comments. Um, it's like right at the very top. And there's a link to the page on my website that has the poetry. And if you scroll down, there's a PDF that you can print out. Or it probably opened on a tablet or something. But it just, it has all the poems and all the words and the poets. So it's kind of a cool thing to um, follow along with if you want to do that. And I think the link is up there. Let me see. Da, da, da. Where did it go? Maybe it's gone now. Um, I don't know if I have the... <laughs> the <laughs> I don't know if I'm sharp enough to repost it right now. Let's... Where did it go? Uh, da, da, da. Top chat. I guess I'm... Isn't this exciting to um, watch me click on my mouse? Like, that's really... Da, da, da. Yeah, I don't know what happened to my comment. Should I should I paste the link or can people just figure it out? All you have to do is go to my website and there's a bunch of links on the main page to the poetry. And then you can um, get the words and follow along. Which I think is actually kind of nice for poems because um, sometimes the words are... They're often really beautiful and it might be hard to make them out. <clears throat> but this one is... Um, 
by Edwin Arlington Robinson. And uh, it's kind of like an anti-war poem, I think. And I, I wrote it sort of late in the process. Uh, and then when, when I finished it, I was like, oh my gosh, I think this is maybe an a cappella song. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Dark hills at evening in the west With sunset hovers like a sound Of golden horns that sang to rest On the bones of warriors underground Found Dark hills at evening in the west Where sunset hovers like a sound Of golden horns that sang to rest On the bones of warriors underground Clap, 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 clap. Um, <laughs> hashtag lullaby vibes. That's my, my um, hashtag for this this album, <laughs> lullaby vibes. I know it sounds a little bit like a DJ name or something. Um, Julie Nicolay cannot open the attachment. Da, da, da. Erica's here in Phoenix. Hello, hello. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, the Memorial Center. Cool. Um, well, welcome everybody, and thanks for <coughs> coming out. I'm so excited that we have um, two channels of audio. That's like really um, exciting for me because uh, <laughs> last time I spent so much time um, checking and double checking everything, and then like just started doing the live stream, and it was um, like no sound in Albuquerque, can't hear you in New Haven or whatever. Um, which was a little bit like a bad dream, but <clears throat> this is not, this is not a bad dream. So I'm just going to, um, this, I, I don't know if I've ever done this before, but I'm just going to run down the whole album start to finish. And, um, this one is a Shakespeare poem, which I think is from a Midsummer Night's Dream. And it's called Fairyland for those of you following along on your Printable lyrics insert, which also is suitable for framing and makes a lovely souvenir. So, <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, this was one where once I recorded it, I I made this demo and then just threw down a bunch of harmonies and was just like, oh my gosh, I really had fun singing that. So, um. lullaby vibes hashtag also hashtag cavernous reverb. Unless you might be thinking like, whoa, I did not realize that our living room had such amazing, incredible acoustics. It really almost sounds like the Sistine Chapel in there or something. Um, yeah, so this is uh, Fairyland from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Hashtag lullaby vibes. <laughs> I feel like a DJ because also this is a little bit of a DJ mic. Um, or I don't even know what they call them these days. The people who work on uh, radio stations. Apparently DJ was possibly <laughs> considered to be like a little bit derogatory or something. I also thought it sounded kind of cool. Um, yeah, but I, f I feel like I'm... You know what it reminds me of is that show... Um, what is the one with that woman who's just like, her name is Delia, I think. And she's just like, here's a special song going out to a couple from Arizona going through some tough times. I'm going to play a little song called Against All Odds by Phil Collins. <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. 
yeah, so I will, I'm going to keep drinking this tea. This is actually like one, um, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> um, a marketing idea that I didn't, I did get a lot of merch, um, over here, as you can see, I got the t-shirts, the journals, the mugs, which I'm pretty excited about. And of course the discs and stickers. Um, but I was going to try and make a blend of, um, tea and it's going to, going to call it the poet's tea. <laughs> Maybe that's too much. Cause I got the poet tea, which is, I guess is what I call the t-shirt. Um, then I, I call this the poet stream. I'm kind of just, um, working the branding or something. I don't know. It's, it's kind of crazy. What do you, uh, what is with all the delish? Oh, Delilah. That's what it is. It's so funny. Um, yeah, I guess I need my glasses or something. I thought everyone was chiming in with the same word, um, about the Shakespeare song. We're just like, delish. <laughs> It is delish. It is Delilah, isn't it? I should be drinking from the mug, but the, here's the thing. I only brought one with me, uh, and I, I didn't want to dirty it up. I don't know. I could. I could. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's me. There's a limited quantity, I guess. <clears throat> um, Yeah, so another another thought that I had when I when I started this album because the the first poem that I set was the one I'm going to do now which is um by E.E. E. Cummings um it's one of my favorite favorite poems um and so my, my original idea was like oh maybe I'll do like an album of all queer poets that that would be like really cool um and then as I was doing it I realized that actually like there's a lot of queer poets out there almost like um more than not probably um and a, f a friend of mine actually said like yeah aren't like most most poets probably are queer uh and I was like well there is <laughs> Robert Frost <laughs> who I think like might be one of the straighter poets out there I don't know um, in my world I like to assume that people are queer until proven otherwise so yeah, but so this is an E.E. E. Cummings poem. Uh, it's called I, I Thank You, God, for Most This Amazing. And uh, I wrote this on New Year's Day, um, which was... Oh, Linda's giving a plug for the mug. Cozy to hold in your hands. I love the run outside. Nice. Thumbs up on the mug. I'm actually really excited about the mug. I'm gonna just... Now it feels like it's the, the home shopping channel or something. But the mug is like this really nice, it's kind of heavy, it's cobalt blue on the inside, it has this little coast, a bamboo coaster that goes on top, and then you can put it underneath. And um, it really does feel like the home shopping channel, doesn't it? It's just like, how much would you expect to pay for this? $69, $79? Well, this can be yours for $19.99 plus $14 shipping and handling. That's actually not the real price. It is um, twenty dollars and like five dollars shipping or something. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, this is E.E. E. Cummings, and is anybody following along on your printable thing? Because I was kind of like a little bit too excited about that, and uh, I don't know if anyone else was quite as into it. Check check, house acoustics are on. Living room is sounding amazing. I thank you, God, for most this amazing day. For the leaping green, the spirits of trees, and a blue, true dream of sky, and for everything. From the no all nothing, human merely being, merely being doubt unimaginable in you. And I who died, I'm alive again. 
given an actual ending you know sometimes it's nice to have that closure <laughs> at the end of a song just a little just a little butter bump that's all we're asking for um i'm just trying to get my pedal in the right place here um i do have a question whenever this gets to you it might take 20 seconds or something but is the balance between the vocal and the piano okay because it sounds to me a tiny bit like the piano is too loud just a hair um but i'm also listening through these um it's a little bit of a like a taylor swift type situation to have these in-ear monitors in which um sounds sounds great looks looks kind of pretty cool it looks like we're pretty pretty high tech here um which i i guess we are in a sense but then also next door there's like composting toilet right words that strike a little bit of fear in the hearts <laughs> of many composting toilet um yeah we don't need to talk about that but this little cabin um belongs to some good friends of mine and uh so funny because it's it's really rustic and obviously you know the composting toilet sorry to keep saying that <laughs> word again um but there it's near it must be near a highway or something because there's um fiber optic internet i don't even know it's crazy the people who built this cabin could never even have imagined like what that is um where is my piano i'm turning the piano down just a tiny 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 bit um Whenever I'm writing, I, I guess it's, it's probably more when I'm recording, um, I, I reach this point where I'm like, okay, I have, I have enough songs. I have enough songs. Let's start um, putting this stuff down. And then while I'm recording, a couple more songs uh, show show up. And one of them was, I think the first one I, I played, or the a cappella one, was the one that showed up while I was writing and then this was another one which was just um 
Yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with these. I mean, uh, just with the melodies, I think, because I didn't have to think about the words. So it, um, <laughs> you should use composting toilet in a poem. Has it been done? I don't know. I mean, I'll have to think about a rhyme for toilet, but I want to stop saying that word just because it's nobody needs to, to hear that. Um, yeah, so this is uh, an A.E. A. E. Hausman poem or um part of oh jack is tuning in with the balance okay we've got some we've got some pretty pretty amazing sound people like if 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 barbara curry and jack are not say um everything's cool then it's cool um yeah so this is um it sounds a little bit like a sea shanty or something i think but it's uh i don't think that it is it's I, I love the words. I love all the words in the poems. This is, um, I think it's just kind of wondering about like, how did we get here? You know, or these, these collections of atoms and it's, um, what are the words from far from eve and morning and yon 12 winded sky, the stuff of life to knit me blue hither. Here am I. It's just, um, yeah, I feel <laughs> like in my, um, sort of, performing instincts when I start reciting poetry there's a <laughs> there's a voice in my head that says you're losing the crowd normally <laughs> with the poetry recitations so just turn the reverb on and get back to work I don't know if you can hear my little I'm gonna try and do a percussive slap on my knee or something I have to do it pretty hard From far from me in the morning And yon twelve wind sky The stuff of life to knit me Blue with a here am I Now for a breath I tarry Nor yet despair Take my hand quick and tell me what have you in your heart? Speak now and I will answer. How shall I help you say it to the Take my endless way from far from even morning and yon twelve wind this guy the stuff of life to knit me blue is the
A E Hausman. Oh, there's that. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just getting over this um cold, I guess. Um, it's actually been fifteen days, but who's counting? <laughs> I don't know. It's just every day I wake up and I think like, I think I turned a corner. But then it sounds more like this. It's like, I think I turned a corner. Um, you know, with the the nose stuff that so I'm trying to make sure I stay hydrated and also keep my drink off camera because I do have like some production standards <clears throat> though it, it now crosses my mind that Barbara Curry is watching who's like used to running like I don't even know 12 or 15 camera shoots or something and uh Still, I'm proud of myself. You know, it's it's pretty nuts what you have to do to be an independent artist. Like, I was just thinking when I was setting all this stuff up yesterday, I was like, well, no, no, it just sounds like I'm complaining. But I'm kind of like, well, I do like, you know, writing and performing and then also like recording engineer and producer and mix engineer. Also graphic designer. Also have to do like a pretty decent amount of web design and marketing and um products i don't know it's just it seems like a lot but then yesterday i was like oh yeah i also have to know how to run video and do lighting or something that's just like yeah it's crazy all that and i still have not even made my first billion yet C congrats to taylor i mean that's really good on her um but i'm believe it or not i'm actually still working on my first billion that's pretty crazy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if I posted in the, I think I posted a link or something, but if you want to um, do any kind of donations for the show, that's great. Um, there's a Venmo link and a PayPal link, and that's a pretty uh, easy way to do stuff. And um, yeah, also check out the merch. We've got the mugs. It, it really feels a little bit like either a telethon or a QVC channel because it's like, if you <laughs> donate now, we'll throw in a package with the mug and the album and the freaking sticker, which is, I'm so, I have to say the, uh, my friend Milo did the design for this album and, um, I've, I've worked with a lot of great people, but this, this one in particular, for some reason, just, um, with the t-shirt, it's my favorite t-shirt that I've ever gotten to print up just like it's a really nice color and it's soft and um anyway yeah I'm just shout out to Milo thanks for making that look so beautiful and I'm gonna do this uh Sappho poem and that uh, that was another part of my you know the early parts of the album where it was like oh it's gonna be all queer poets you know because Sappho is a pretty well-known lesbian poet from ancient Greece and I can't even say how old this is. It's probably um, uh, 1,500 years. I'm not sure. I can't quite do the math on it. And uh, it's a translation from the Greek. Um, and it's just this really simple poem, but the song... Um, <laughs> did someone say, show us your blue pants? I'll show you my blue pants right there. That's a that's a indigo crushed velvet with a flare bottom. And not only are these like probably the best looking pants I own, they're <laughs> the crushed velvet vibes. Hashtag lullaby vibes. Um, they're so comfortable. Like I just I feel a little bit dressy, but I just I kinda just wear them around the house for like lounging. Um but then if I had to go to a formal event I could just do it. Just like stat. <clears throat> um Anyway, this is, it's probably one of my favorite songs on the album, uh, and it's called The Moon, and it has this really uh, beautiful cello part, and just um, kind of, even after listening to it probably, you know, a hundred times or more, it kind of just transports me. Um, there's just, yeah, it was kind of just a lucky, it all came together, so... Reverb activated. Mm. 
The stars about the lovely moon Fade back and vanish very soon When round and full of silver fades Swims into sight and light some space The stars about the lovely moon Fade back and vanish very soon When round and full of silver face Swims into sight and lights up in space The stars about the lovely moon fade back and vanish very soon. When round and full of silver face swims into sight and lights on space. Oh, The Moon from Delilah. <laughs> Sorry, just got lost lost in thought there. Whoa. Let me see if there's anything I need to catch catch up on since show us your blue pants. Love the crushed velvet vibes. Hashtag crushed velvet. Hashtag lullaby vibes. Um Wow, wow. Is anybody else saying um delish? Or has that already gone out of <clears throat> twenty six hundred years ago? Wow, that is a classic. That really is a classic. No, Shula's tuned in, and uh, she's um, maybe one of the only people in the audience who could be playing cello with that song and kicking some butt doing it. (laughs) 
Okay, so where are we now here? Um, I think this is a song called Freedom. And it was, I don't think it's really by a well-known poet. poet. Uh, it's this, this person named Olive Runner. And, um, but I kind of was just going with this feeling of, um, I don't know, if a poem jumped out at me and if something came together really quickly, then I just sort of went with it. So this is... A little bit gospely, I think. Let me get my hashtag reverb vibes. Hashtag cathedral in your living room. Uh, oh, okay. I'm yep, sorry. Trying to catch up in the chat. There's a lot of multitasking going on here. Um, um, 
it also was really exciting for me to um, finally be able to do an album of piano stuff. Um, it turned <laughs> turned out to be a little bit mellow. That's okay. There is there are a couple of tracks that'll pick things up um, later. I wasn't gonna do one now. <laughs> This was um, I saw I sung a version of this in a choir. It's a, it's a poem called "The Bluebird," and there's a really beautiful choral arrangement of it. And um, I love the simplicity of the words. It's talking about this scene where there is a lake, and the blue sky is reflected in the lake, and then a there's a bluebird. <laughs> flying in the middle of all that and just talking about the blue in blue in blue and I I love those moments you know honestly these days that's that's kind of what's getting me through life is is trying to find those um, little moments of beauty and appreciation and multiply them and find as many as I can so seems like somebody's act battling a little bit of depression <laughs> Seems like somebody's also trying to do some version of an accent. Though it's not clear if it's from Australia or New Zealand. I get them mixed up. Somehow it makes depression seem less funny when, <laughs> when I say it in that accent. It seems like you might be a little bit depressed. You ever think of it? I also, um, I was practicing this and I thought like, um, oh, I, I probably ought to take it up a half step from uh, where it is on the album. And I was going to try and cheat and just find a button on this keyboard that would like, boop, bump it up. Could not find that button. <laughs> so I was like, rut row, I have to do an old school transposition. And <laughs> the thing is, it was in C before, you know, which is just like all the, all the white keys. And uh, to transpose it up a half step takes it into D flat, so it's um, a little different. The bluebird. Oh, oh, we got, got a little, little echo, 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 echo delay, delay there. there. That's a lot of delay even for me. Check, check, check. check. Reverb activated. Thank you. 
Hashtag <laughs> chamber music vibes. Kind of. Okay, I'm getting the vote for New Zealand accent. Okay, I think that's what I was going for, but I'm not 100% sure. Um. Mm. I have been watching a lot of New Zealand TV, so I think it's possible that I've picked up some of those accents. I don't know if you've seen that show, Our Flag Means Death. Um, that was, I don't know, I kind of like that one. New Zealand has just got its own thing going. So it's kind of funny on the way here. I am. Um, um, it's Emily Dickinson's birthday today, I guess. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, dear Emily Dickinson. Happy birthday, 192. Something like that. Um, I'm not sure, but I am. Um, fashion chops. That's totally New Zealand. Um, I I thought, oh, it would be so sweet in the live stream if I um have a piece of birthday cake with a candle for Emily Dickinson just because I really like her poetry. Um, and then I, I got here, and I forgot, and I almost felt like I had let a friend down. I was like, oh, I forgot to bring the cake. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I actually stopped by uh, Emily Dickinson's house, um, as one does. We're pretty tight. Um I no, I was in um, passing through Massachusetts, and it was sort of on my list of stuff that I would have liked to do. Uh, so I got to go to the Emily Dickinson Museum, and uh, it was kind of funny because the tour guide was. Um, I think they they try to, um, you know, because I think a lot of people when they think of Emily Dickinson, they think like reclusive, and so the tour guide was saying like, um, you know, she actually. Um, was was very social and liked to go to parties and hang out with people and would often, you know, come downstairs uh, to events. And this was well into her 20s. And I was like, um, she lived to be 57. So <laughs> that's like 30 years of <laughs> pretty solid reclusion, reclusion, whatever you call it. Um, anyway, it was kind of... Uh, funny slash validating because she was I mean I'm actually super duper reclusive and um she she got to the point where people would come to call at the house and uh, she would only talk to them from the other other side of the door and that kind of made me feel like okay I'm, I'm not there yet you know there's still there's still I'm still hanging in there with um sociable folks face-to-face <laughs> -face contact and whatnot and I think she also used to like when the little uh, kids would come from the neighborhood to visit she um, would lower them down baked goods in a basket from upstairs which I mean you gotta admit it's kind of sweet that she was giving them baked goods but also she was like I'm not leaving this room <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, this is uh, Hope is the Thing with Feathers. This one has a really nice uh, brass part on the album. And uh, yes, it reminds me of Julie Nicolay's playing on um, Black Crow and other albums. And... Um, but I had to work with someone who was doing remote recording, so um, I got this this um, woman in New York who plays trombone. Personally, I think Julie Nicolay could have nailed it given the chance. Emily Dickinson.
Lullaby Vibes with Delilah. That might have been my best um, Delilah <laughs> imitation yet. Um, yeah, Emily Dickinson. Love her stuff. So Another one of those people who was, uh, was people knew that she could write and was a good writer, um, but she didn't really want to publish her poems. And it wasn't until she died that her sister found this chest and opened it up and was like, oh my gosh, there's like 1,800 poems in here. And she had just been kind of, you know, squirreled away in her room writing these beautiful poems with really interesting and different punctuation and syntax and um, kind of was, was way ahead of her time. this pedal and it's supposed to stay still but it keeps like sliding away from me so I'm just trying to stay there pedal I need you okay um there's a, a college here where I live um and I went to this lecture and it was this woman talking about um basically a, a lot of um really worthy black poets that had been kind of left out of um, the history books. And one of them was um, Paul Lawrence Dunbar. And uh, she had said, like, you know, I really encourage you to um, look up some of his poetry and, um, you know, put it to music if you feel inspired to. And uh, (laughs) the next day I went home and wrote this. So, which is... um, Oh, it's such a it's such a fun track on the album, and I wish that I could um, clap my hands and uh, play piano at the same time, but I can't. So maybe I don't know. Will you 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 might be able to clap at home? That could could work. Um, the song itself is like uh, the words are a hymn, I think. So. One, my stumbling feet. 
Maybe I should have saved that for the closer. Oopsie daisy. Too late now. <laughs> hmm. Maybe I'll do a, re a reprise because I have this really great idea where I want to go into. I can't tell if it's a little bit of an awkward transition, but I'd like to, I'd like to, if I, if and when I do the song live, do a little, um, and then. or like sacrilegious like let's go from this gospel song into the Beatles I don't know it could be fun it could be fun um we're getting like to the we're getting down to the wire here there's just a few more tracks left um This was one that, um, I mean, I've been looking, I'm just, you know, was scouring the internet in different places and anthologies and looking through all these poems. And, um, my friend Kari was like, oh, do, do you know Edna St. Vincent Millay? Uh, and I, I knew her name and had seen a couple of poems, but I didn't, nothing had jumped out at me yet, you know, to write. And, uh. Then I saw this poem, and again, it was like almost an instantaneous... Uh, that gets a little anno annoying, I think. 
You're just like, I just, it just came. I just wrote it. It took 10 minutes or something. Um, but it was, it was so fast. I just had talked to Kari, got off the phone, found the poem, wrote the song. And I think I sent her a demo, um, like that night or something. So. I think the story of it is is about someone I mean she she had a really interesting life and um I think her and her husband had an open relationship back in the like 20s and 30s and she dated women and um yeah they both were they liked to party I guess I'll put it that way um and she was kind of this rare person I think in that she was a poet but she also kind of loved the spotlight and apparently had this kind of legendary speaking voice and uh, loved to read her poems and <clears throat> but this one uh I don't know why it grabbed me it, it sounds like someone who was like uh I think she was supposed to get married to this person and and couldn't make up her mind but then thought like okay I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it and then he came over and uh said actually you know what I'm I'm not gonna marry you and it sounds like she was distraught enough that she was like suicidal which oh it was a real cheerful album you made there anomaly <laughs> Thank you. 
one for all the uh, star-crossed lovers out there. Maybe having a little bit of a rough night tonight. Delilah. I gotta just wrangle, <laughs> I gotta wrangle this pedal with my feet, sorry. Um. Uh, this next one was so much freaking, uh, I want to say fun, but uh, it also was just a really, um, what do you call it? Um, it was like in my mind's eye, I could see um, what ought to happen with the song. And it was um, sort of like... Do you know that song Philadelphia Freedom by Elton John? I can't think of how it goes like I love, love you. Yes I do. It's like this this piano part and there's a bunch of sort of disco strings happening on it. And um so on this song, I was was thinking like, okay, I can, can kind of hear like violin, viola, and cello, but at the same time, I've never really written the chart for those instruments, and um, so it involved a little bit of a, a learning curve for me. Uh, and then I found this person in the UK who recorded all of the in, all of the instruments together, and it was um, yeah, it was it was a lucky and, and good thing for me. Um, this is a Walt Whitman poem. <clears throat> I hope my voice is going to hold up for this because I'm just like a little bit scratchy from that dang cold. Um. Uh, yeah, Walt Whitman, so...
Whitman. Um, as I call them, Whit, Whit Waltman. I don't know why one day I just thought that was the funniest thing. I won't even tell you about the typo that I kept making whenever I was typing out the lyrics for stuff because the W is right next to the S on the keyboard. So that's, that's all I'm going to say in regards to that. <coughs> And now we're down to the last track in the album. Um, oh. And I made just enough tea, I guess. So, um, yeah, thanks thanks to all of you for being here. To I haven't played many of these songs in public for people, so this is all sort of... I'm still figuring it out. And I only just made that one mistake with the... Um, yeah, so I'm going to do this, uh, this last song, which is the last track in the album and it has a really interesting story because, you know, people always say to songwriters, um, have you ever had a song come to you in a dream or something? And honestly, like after writing songs for 20 years, nope, <laughs> never ha never happened to me. Um, and didn't necessarily happen, um, with, with this song, but I was, at the time, I was just immersed in poems, 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 poems. And I was having this dream where, in the dream, I was reading a poem. And then I was, and I was also crying in the dream. And um, <clears throat> because the words were so beautiful. And then, I, and then when I got up and realized what the poem was about, then I started crying in real life at like three in the morning. And um, it was just this feeling of, um, you know, like we all walk this earth in these bodies and, you know, they have their issues, whether it's, you know, physical or mental or like whatever it is, like most of us struggle with being in a body, you know, and, um, but uh, this, this dream and this poem just put me in a place where I realized like, um, as hard as I can be on myself sometimes, like I know that when I leave this earth and I leave this body that I'm going, I'm going to miss it and, and not just being in a body, but this exact one, you know, with, with these fingers and whatever other <laughs> features I have going on. And it was, um, it was just a really touching moment. Cause I think, I don't know about you, but I, sp I spend, a lot of time being hard on myself and I, I try really hard not to be, but then I end up often being anyway. And this was just a moment of just having this really different perspective. And, um, and, and the words did come to me in a dream and I got, I got up and, and wrote them down. And, uh, so this is like the one poem on the album that I wrote. Uh, and it's a song called Approximate Day which I think means, you know, a day that's approaching soon or something. Pro 
approximate day I will at last see Man grown or woman Declare Declare body Every dream desires song. The work is done, the work is done. At least in one world. If not the next. Proximity, I will at last see man grown or woman declare, declare body peace. We shall, I love you. We And that's it. Track 12. The last track in the album. The end. Except that I have to give like an awkward <laughs> 20 second delay to allow people to react. Sometimes in life it would be nice to have that delay, you know? Just give me 20 seconds to think about how I, <laughs> I want to react to that. Ooh. Whoa, lots of clappy hands coming in. And almost... And some hearts flying up on the screen there. It's pretty exciting. Is there... Um, are people chanting from their various places um, in this country and other countries? Something like... One more song. 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 Okay, that actually sounds a little bit like the soundtrack from a horror movie or something. Don't do that, Anomaly. <clears throat> um, so thanks for being here. I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend this is an encore because I had one more song I wanted to do for you. Um, yeah, that was it was fun for me to play the whole the whole album. I don't usually ever get to do that because I don't know it's it just doesn't happen. And, um, but can I, if I can do an encore for you and, um, oh yeah, Linda, Linda says she's catching the chord changes. Something about this album that was fun for me is there's, if you listen carefully, there's little pieces of songs in other songs. So not that I have to like explain it all to you, but 
the end of that song is actually from the uh, Shakespeare, the... Uh There's like some little uh, themes like that. Oh, there it is. Encore. One more song. Delish. 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 Um, okay. Is that what's happening? Are we doing that? So I actually have um, in, in the pipeline, I don't know what we call it, but I wrote probably like twice as many songs as I needed to to finish an album and some of them were sort of going in this different direction and it seemed like okay this is maybe not the same collection of songs and uh because they were a sort of electric piano and drum machine um so I have to do at some point either in spring or summer um to make a volume two of the poetry and um this was a cool, I don't know, it was it was fun for me because it's this poem, I don't know how old it is, but um, it's by John Bannister Tabb, and it's a, a poem called Evolution, and I know that I had heard it before, um, because it's, uh, what are the words, out of the dusk a shadow, then a spark, out of the cloud a silence, then a lark, out of the heart a rapture, then a pain, out of the dead cold ashes life again. So it's, it does end like on a little bit of a hopeful note, but... So yeah, this is this is going to be volume two whenever that comes out. But truly, thanks so much to all of you for being here, and thanks for your donations and any, if you bought any merch, thank you for that. Um, and yeah, here comes the encore, John Bannister Tab.
All right, so there's a little taste of what's um, <laughs> coming up. I love that delicious is now a thing from Delilah. <laughs> it's um, funny. Um, yeah, it's always so weird wrapping up these live streams because it's just like the, there's no strange strange delay and I'm worried that I'm going to like end the stream and maybe people are still like, oh, but we might want to hear more. But then also, since you're at home, like you could just walk away. Like there's, it's not, there's no, no pressure. Um, I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't really have anything planned beyond that. I don't know. There is, um, I did have one more song. I actually have two albums in the works. It's kind of a, a crazy thing. Um, and one of them I'd really like to finish. Um, Let's start here. So may maybe I will do one more. <laughs> I'll do another encore. This is, um, so I have this, this album, another album of poetry stuff. Uh, and then I have this album of more uh, singer songwriter -y things, some on piano and some on guitar. And uh, this is a song that I wrote actually a couple of years ago that I really, um, oh, it just felt so good to write it, you know, because I do, I struggle a lot with mental health stuff and depression and anxiety and all kinds of ups and downs. And um, it just felt like a hopeful song. Uh, coming out so it reminds me a little bit of I uh, can't think of the person who would write songs with Barbara Streisand or something it's uh maybe Randy Newman I think that type of that type of song but um so this will be okay this is the last song I, I think I did it with a drum machine on the um, the demo. I don't know if it really needs it or if it's it's gonna be too much. Whoa! It really gets a little. I don't know. It's pretty groovy, isn't it? Kind of digging that. See? 
right, now that's that's some reverb. Maybe that's more of a closing song. Mm. Um, yeah, cool. Well, thanks for thanks for being here for this, and uh, I hope you had a good time. And yeah, I'm just a bubble of awkwardness at the moment. So, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna click and stream. It feels a little bit sad, but it has to happen at some point. And I feel like my voice is getting just a little bit ragged. So, um, but truly thanks to all of you for being here and for supporting this record and, uh, Hope you enjoy the music and the, the merch and whatever else. All right. Mwah. Love to you all. Hope is the thing with Vatherland.